Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It is Rabbi Stephen again here with uh, another Dvar Torah. And this week, uh, I just want to give uh, a shout out and some kudos. Saturday morning, we had a short minion. Now, what do I mean by a short minion? We had nine people. Now, everybody knows, everybody who's Jewish knows that a minion is composed of 10. Uh, ulti- initially, it was 10 adult males. But these days we do it with females and we had nine. Now, why can you do or how can you justify a minion with nine people? Because you use one of the Torahs as the 10th person. Now, where does that come from? A Torah, once it is non-usable or in human terms, once a Torah is dead, it's beyond repair, you bury it. You bury it like a person. And since you bury it like a person, you can use a Torah as a person to go from 9 to 10 to make a minion. And uh, we had some people come in. Uh, Robin, it was great having you there. Sherry, always great. Bob and Lynn Kaplan. Um, and uh, Larry and his brother-in-law. And, uh, oh, and, and kudos to Jack, Jack Magnan, who was bar mitzvah a few weeks ago and is showing up for Saturday with his guitar. We have some music. It's a lot of fun. And um, I would encourage, uh, this is kind of, here, here's kind of a little insidious sell, sell job. We'd love to have some of you show up too. Try it out. Try it out. You know, yeah, it goes a little long. Show up at 10, show up a little later and uh, see that you don't like it. You know, we, we try to make it that, uh, make it interesting, make it fun with singing, explanation, so you know what's going on. So so there's my, uh, there's my advertisement. Okay, so let's get to it. First of all, uh, this week is Purim. We're going to talk about that. Purim is uh, Wednesday evening to Thursday. And Wednesday, uh, even though it's Wednesday and Thursday, Thursday at school, which starts at 4.30, goes to 6.30, we have a break at 5.30, so after the 20-minute break or so, we're going to read from the Megillah. We've got all the groggers out there. If your kids want to come in costume, that's great. And that's what we're going to do for the second half of class. Additionally, this is the first month, the first weekend of the month. I'm thinking too much ahead. And being that it's the first weekend of the month, we have our Tat Shabbat at 5.45, regular service at 7, and then the kid-friendly service at 9.45 on Saturday morning goes for an hour and a half. So if you want to try out a Saturday morning, see what you think, that'd be a good place to start. It's an hour and a half. We keep it at an hour and a half, and uh, that way, you know, it's a little pat- more palatable, maybe. So this Friday, 5.45, instead of a Tat Shabbat, we're going to have a Tat Purim. So all little kids will come, make some noise. We'll read the Megillah. When we say the word name Haman, you know, you can do the groggers, make some noise, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, still looking for the actual scroll, but we've got the text. So one way or another, we're going to do it. What is significant about Purim? Let's talk about that as long as we're on the topic, and then we'll talk a little bit about this portion. Well, the word Purim itself, the word Pur means lot. And back in the days of Ahasuerus, who was the king that succeeded King Cyrus in Persia, uh, who was actually the king that gave, uh, that gave his sanction to the exiled Jews there to go back to uh, Israel, back to Canaan, and rebuild the temple. This was the second temple, Ezra being one of the most notable dignitaries, one of the prophets that was there at the inception, uh, to go back and build the temple. Okay, Ahasuerus had a little bit different idea. And that's really kind of part of the crux of the story. Now, Haman was a political figure who was very ambitious, rose to power, became the prime minister or viceroy, second, you know, vice, second in command, roy, you know, from the uh, Latin word king, ra in French. And he's walking down the street one day and everybody's bowing to him and uh, everybody except for Mordecai, who did not bow to him because being Jewish, being from the tribe of Benjamin, being an Israelite, we don't bow down to uh, earthly kings. We don't do it. Now, some people say, well, you know, if you're in front of a king, you know, do what's accepted for that particular location for that country. But back then, you know, this guy Haman had a big ego. He thought he was kind of a god. And Mordecai was not going to recognize him as a god, didn't bow down. Haman did a little investigating, found out that Mordecai was Jewish or an Israelite, and said, oh, you know, these people are against us, they're going to join with their enemies, you know, the typical usual thing that you hear from anti-Semites. And he said, we got to get rid of them. So the king said, do what you want, do it when you want, and 
Haman said, well, when are we going to do it? Let's just draw lots and figure it out. The lot that came up was the 15th of Adar. Now, a lot of the names of the months of the Hebrew calendar are actually from Babylonian names. Some of them are Hebrew, derived from Hebrew, but some of them are Babylonian. So you think the 15th of Adar, you know, well, there it is. <clears throat> and that was the day that he was going to kill the Jews. So um, Mordecai, of course, got his actually cousin, Esther. Now, Esther, whose real name was Hadassah, uh, the name of the women's group that's prevalent in our area, of course, and uh, other women's groups, uh, gets her to be uh, part of the king's harem because the king's wife, uh, Vashti, she was, she was doing, she was a whole, she was like really kind of one of the first women's libs. You know, he was having a banquet, wanted Vashti to join him. Vashti was having her own banquet, said no, and, you know, he got rid of her and decreed that uh, all the women need to obey the menfolk and then held a beauty contest for the next queen. Mordecai encouraged Hadassah to be part of that, and the king saw Esther, Hadassah, she used the name Esther, fell in love, made her the queen. She had some influence. Ultimately, she thwarted Haman's plans. You want to hear more? Come to the Megillah reading, right? There's your, there's your kind of uh, introduction, your, your scenes from next week, if you will, right? So that's what happened with Purim, and it's considered to be a, a very momentous occasion. It was a, one of the miracles. We talk about Purim uh, during uh, the temple service part of our Amidah, because uh, it's the same time that we would cite the miracle of uh, Hanukkah, Ahanisi, Vaha Prakan, Vaha wrote, you know, the, the, the wonders, the miracles that God has wrought, saved us from the tyrant Haman. What's interesting, too, about Haman's background is that we have the, the Shabbat before, before the month of Adar is Shabbat Zahor. And Shabbat to remember. What do we remember? We remember the Amalekites, who were a bunch of cowards that hid in the hills, and as the train of Israelites were passing through, um, the uh, Amalekites attacked the people in the back who were the women and the children, right? They were cowards, completely unprovoked. We were not threatening them at all, but that's what they did, and they think, and, and Hashem said, wipe out the Amalekites. We didn't. People say that Haman, and Hitler too, they think, was a descendant of the Amalekites. So that's the... Uh, uh, the significance there. All right, so let's talk about this Torah portion, okay? Tisa, right? The interesting, the crux of this point is the idea of the golden calf or the Egel HaMachseh, ha, 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 which is the molten calf. So Moses says, I'm going to go up to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. They thought it was 40 days. So the 40th day comes, they're like, where's Moshe Rabbeinu? He must have died. Who's going to lead us out of Israel? So they were, and, and the people got upset, and they wanted to build a some type of, of figurine. Let's, let's call it a figurine. It wasn't really an idol. Yeah, it was, but yeah, it wasn't because they wanted somebody to lead us. Still believed in Hashem. Now, the... The controversy is that Aharon, who is Moses' brother and, just, and is being anointed the head priest, goes and helps him. Now, in the Midrash, the folklore, they say, they, they earlier it mentions Aharon and her. All right? So you had Moses on top of Mount Sinai, you had Joshua in the middle, you know, his protege, you had the elders on the bottom, and then you had Aharon, you know, just kind of at the foot. And the folklore says that later on, her is not mentioned because the people wanted us, Aaron, and for, or her said no, and they killed him. So Aaron says, you know, I, I better appease these people, at least until Moses comes back. So he kind of helps them. And people say, well, this, this guy's the head priest, or he's going to be the head priest, because the chronology doesn't necessarily follow according to the Parshans. Right? But nevertheless, Aaron is, is anointed as the high priest, and there he is helping these people make this figurine, this idol, this Elohim. Alilim, Elohim can mean God with a small g, or Alilim, which means an idol. You know, why is he helping him? Because Aaron, first of all, was concerned about himself. Maybe I'm next, and you know, they'll kill me if I don't cooperate. He was also, he was a very peaceful person. He was a man of peace. You know, he heard the two Israelites were fighting. He'd go to one Israelite, he'd say, hey, you know, that's a person that you, you know, they feel real bad that, you know, you're not talking to them anymore. And then he'd go to the other person and say, oh, that person you're fighting with, you know, they feel real bad that you're fighting and you're not friends anymore. And the two would get together. So that's kind of what our own would do. So he figures, okay, let me try and appease him. He then says, okay, well, in order to do this, we need a lot of gold and, and jewelry in order to, you know, make, make this 
this golden calf that we're going to, this molten calf we're going to do. Figuring, oh, these people never give up the gold, but you know, they were right on there. You know, like, whoa, here's the gold. You know, they went, pulled it off their wives and, you know, took it out of their stash that they got from Egypt and they did it. So uh, Aaron says, you know, he puts the, puts the, uh, makes the calf and then he says, he goes, oh, here's the, here's the visualization. You know, tomorrow will be a festival to Hashem. So he never lost sight of the fact that he was Hashem, even that, that this was, you know, that he, you know, wor worshiped and ministered to Hashem, but he did try to buy some time and say, this is your figurine. Moses comes down uh, on the 40th day, goes, what's going on, you know, and uh, he sees what's going on, smashes the Ten Commandments, you know, smashes the idol, grinds it up, puts it in water, makes the people drink it. Then, you know, he turns to the people and says, you know, we need to get rid of these people. So who answered the call? The Levites. They took their swords and they made short work out of the, uh, out of the rabble rousers, out of, out of the renegades. And that's why the Levites are the ministers, you know, of, of the temple. They earn that right by defending the faith. And hence, when later on, when it's been talking about Aaron and the Levites being the ministers, here's the origin. Thank you very much for listening. Looking forward to seeing you this weekend. Uh, again, we'll do the Megillah reading, second part of class, 10, 5 to 6, somewhere that on Thursday. Tot Purim, 5.45 on Friday. We'll also do it at the regular service at 7. And then Saturday, we're just going to do a regular service. Thank you very much. Shabbat Shalom. And again, thanks for listening.